I am the Ronin Pawn, and this is my computer. And that's my cell phone. This is a fire extinguisher. This is a table. These are socks I'm wearing. And this is an envelope that just came in the mail today from EVGA, manufacturers of, uh, well, that sort of thing. Now, I'm not gonna say that I'm an EVGA fanboy. That would, after all, be a gross misrepresentation of the affair. I mean, have I purchased things from EVGA before? Sure I have. Brand loyalty aside, I was recently informed over Twitter by Casper VLD that um, if I'm going to keep running my GTX 1070, I'm going to want to have one of these near me. There's a minor overheating issue that has caused some people's computers to do that. This, this fire extinguisher is heavy, holding it one-handed. Now don't freak out on me here, by all accounts you have to push your card pretty damn hard in order to get it to go up in flames, but EVGA has always been friendly to overclockers, and um, those of you who have, uh... But EVGA has two solutions, ladies and gentlemen, and one is as simple as a BIOS flash and doesn't involve this. They're sending down a BIOS patch that will allow the fan to kick up a little bit higher in order to keep it a little bit cooler when you start maxing it out. And for those who are uncomfortable flashing a BIOS, or who just don't know what the hell I'm talking about, EVGA is willing to cross-ship cards so that you can send back the one that's got a problem, and they'll send you one that's got a solution. On top of that, EVGA is on the record saying that if you happen to brick your card while trying to flash the BIOS because you don't know what you're doing, they will cover you. They will send you a new card. And on top of that, EVGA has offered the solution that I chose, which is to add thermal pads to the card that will accommodate for the little bits in there that cause it to do this. It took me a minute to set up that, that um, visual effect, so I just want to use it a lot. At least I'm assuming it took me a while, because I haven't actually done it yet. This is the recording, editing comes after. This parts kit is absolutely free to anyone who has an affected card. EVGA will ship this to you, as they did me. And, okay, remember I was talking about that whole cross-shipping thing? If you mess the process up with the BIOS and you brick your own card, if you mess this up, they'll swap it out too. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you how to install the thermal pads onto your affected 1070 or 1080 EVGA graphics card. And by show you, I, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna try and figure it out on camera, and then if I don't screw it up, you can you can do what I did, is, is, what, is how we're gonna do this. Oh yeah, gonna need a screwdriver, probably. It just didn't occur to me, you know, I got the lighting, the camera, I got a microphone that's out of frame. I just forgot that maybe I would need some tools to do this. Don't, don't, just, just, mm. Okay. It is a sexy looking card, isn't it? I quite like it. I quite like how it looks in my case. I quite like how it's been handling my VR needs as well. Only thing I don't like is some of this stuff on the back tends to... Find out what's in the bag here. Got, you know, a bag containing a bag. Instructions, thank God. And, how oh, thoughtful, it is winter. I could use a new glove. The following instructions and pictures are provided to assist you with the installation of the EVGA GTX 1080 1070 thermal pad mod. Please be careful when removing the back plate and heat sink. There are very several small screws used which can easily be stripped. Likewise, please be careful when it's holding a heat sink. Metal fins may be sharp. There's a accessory list of the base and thermal grease and plate and a VRAM thermal plane. Okay. Required hardware. Phillips number one screwdriver. Not included. What do you expect, people that have screwdrivers, EVGA? Parts kit looks pretty simple. All I've got is some thermal paste and some rubber pads. Two sides. According to the instructions, first thing we do is remove the back plate by removing these screws. And these, and those, some of them are just right over there, actually. I actually have a small screwdriver set for just this sort of thing, but I cannot, for the life of me, find it, so we're dealing with a larger screwdriver. Ideally, you'd want to make sure that you're at least not using a magnetic-tipped screwdriver while you're taking any electronic components apart, and also, you would want to um, make sure that you occasionally touch something metal, so that the static electricity that you're generating simply by being a human being will be dissipated and not zap over to one of these very important pieces of circuitry. Another very important thing to keep in mind, if you have a small kitten, as I do, probably want to have them outside of the room for this. That is just a walking static electric ball of cuteness. I think we all know what happens when a static ball of cuteness gets near sensitive computer components. Yeah, I'm using the hell out of that graphic, you know? It probably didn't even take me that long to put it together. 
Ah, there we go. It comes off. Don't be afraid. Or be afraid. You know, you could really screw this up, and then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, you call EBGA and say, I screwed it up, and they said, okay, we'll send you another one. Step two of this process simply has me removing more and more screws, this time from the PCB. Keep your screws separate so that you know which ones go where in the process. And if you actually are following along and you have this kit, make sure that you're unscrewing the green circled screws on the instruction sheet first before you unscrew the red ones. The red ones are for the heat sink directly on the GPU, and just hold off on those until you've got the PCB released. Do not, repeat, do not remove that one. That's what it says in the instructions. Don't remove it. Which, you know, you might have just, like, not circled it. That probably would have accomplished the same thing. Excuse me, I just heard my cat knock a bunch of stuff over. I'll be right back. What are you doing? Making a big mess, knock a bunch of stuff over, is that what we're doing? And having just touched a cat, before I continue, I'm going to touch something metal. Oh, hey, here's a, here's a fire extinguisher. Once the PCB mounted screws are out, now you can attack these ones. And you'll know the difference, because they have springs on them. If you've pulled those out first, well, you screwed it all off. And go clip your fingernails, or at least clean underneath them, my god. It's okay if you pulled one of them too early, don't worry about it, it'll probably all be fine, and if it's not, well, you only have yourself to blame, because you didn't read the instructions, or watch the video! When those screws have been removed, carefully turn the card over, say the instructions. Before we can remove this heat sink, at the corner of the card where you've got the end of the branding here, there should be some LED cable mounts under here, and they're recommending that you take uh, the camera and aim it at the thing you're, you're filming. A small flathead screwdriver and try and get it underneath this lip. Now, everything's very loose right now because we've got all the screws pulled out of it. They probably should have told you to do this up front. That would have been a lot smarter there, EVGA, but then I suppose, you know, not designing a card that spontaneously combusts would have been pretty smart, too. And just work all the angles you can possibly reach a little bit at a time in order to get this out so that you don't end up breaking the connections. There we go. Oh, I think it just popped. Did it pop? Something popped. Was it my fingers? Well, wow, that thing is really in there, and um, I'm wearing a suit coat, getting very hot, leaning over a camera, trying not to raise my voice, even though I want to curse right now because of how difficult this thing is to get out of here. Uh, yeah, I'd say we've got about 30 seconds to full me meltdown. It would probably look like this. I think I might be able to get in at this little corner right there and pry up from the very bottom of it. Eh, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's got her. I promise you that's going to be the most difficult part of this process for all of us. With the LED power connection detached, grab the heat sink on the top, slide it toward the back of the card as you pull away, and you'll be able to get to the remaining cables that are there in the back. This is the power connection for the fans, and again the process is from either side, pry gently, but firmly, come on, come on! At least until you can get underneath this spot right here, where you can see right down to the bottom of the power connector, and when you can, just like that. Careful when handling the heat sink, it has this layer of thermal paste on it, and you probably don't want to make a mess. Same thing with the GPU, for entirely different reasons. It's the GPU, so, you know, just be careful with that, as a general rule. At this stage in the game, you should be able to remove this heat plate, all right, and then on the back of it, you'll find these thermal pads, and these thermal pads are what we're going to be replacing. These pads provide a thermal conductivity to the VRAM that's on board the PCB surrounding the GPU, and all we do is peel them off. Using a lint-free rag and some isopropyl alcohol that I'm totally using, and it's not just Windex, we're going to clean all this stuff up. These are those VRAM chips I was talking about before that surround it. These are where the pads make their connection. And we're just cleaning things up a little bit to get rid of some of that sticky. Be very delicate while you're doing this, because, as you will see when you've got hands-on, there are very, very tiny resistors all over this board that you could very easily fingernail off. This, by the way, is a special custom lint-free cloth and not just a piece of paper towel. Absolutely not. Not not just a piece of paper towel I'm using. 
I, I wouldn't do that. No, sir. If you want to get double extra bonus points from teacher, you can go around the edge of the chip with your flathead and just remove that excess thermal paste, although you probably shouldn't. It's the kind of thing that I've always done. I was only repairing computers for 10 years, so, you know, what the hell do I know? Now, at this point, we're going to apply some new thermal paste down to the GPU, but if you're like me and you've got some Arctic thermal paste, some really good stuff, and you can't find it because you've just moved into a new house, then you can just use the thermal paste that they sent you. It's basically as good. Now we're ready to replace the VRAM thermal pads. It's these top three, and they're going to go across all the banks of VRAM. The instructions given don't specifically denote whether or not to put the sticky side down or up while you're doing it, but later it does say the adhesive on the thermal pads should hold the base plate in place. So I'm putting them on sticky side up, not on the VRAM. If I'm incorrect there, uh, EVGA, you might want to be more clear. And the problem with putting them sticky side up is that they don't want to stay, and that makes me worry uh, that when I do try to line the base plate up, I'm going to be knocking the pads off. I really want to put these sticky side down. If the instructions didn't say what it says, then I would be. With the thermal pads in place, I'm going to very carefully, for the reasons I just made clear, set the base plate back down exactly where it goes. And now we get to the part that is probably the reason why this kit was required. We're going to take this sticky pad and put it right over the top of these chips. Because in the original design, they had no thermal conductivity. Now, they're going to have something. Instructions are again a little unclear. The base plate should look like this when finished. See how form-fitting that is? How, how right down on it it is? They don't say, but I think the sticky side is supposed to be going down. And with the sticky side down, I can apply a little bit of force, kind of push it in there, make some really good connections. And you tell me that doesn't look a little bit more like that. And now it's time to reattach the heat sink but I'm a little bit concerned over the fact that they don't want you to remove this. It doesn't say to remove this. I would usually remove this from every heat sink that I've ever installed. I would take off the thermal paste. I'd put new thermal paste down on that side. I would do this all from scratch. But hey, it's EVGA's instructions. If you want me to use old thermal paste on, you know what, no, I'm, I'm doing it myself. No thermal paste on this side is Ronan Pawn's instructions. Do with it what you will. I flip the card, it's time to reconnect the fan power header and the LED power header, and then carefully reseat the card, putting a little bit of pressure in this direction, away from your inputs, and then sliding it back in. And now we can flip the card and start putting some screws back in. If we can keep this thing from sliding too much around, and the more it slides around, the more it's kind of ruining your thermal paste job. So, and a little bit of wiggle is good. Too much, not so good. In reverse order now, start by installing the heat sink mount screws. When you're putting these first four screws in, go in an X pattern. You just don't want to apply all the pressure to one side while you're reattaching everything. And when you've got all four of them in, come back and give it a little bit of an extra turn on each one of these. And because you were a good little boy or girl and kept your screws separate while you were taking this apart, you know exactly which screws go to which point, don't you? What? You didn't set your screws apart separately. Do you not have OCD? Come on. And just go back to all of them and see if you can give them a little bit of an extra turn. Now we've come to the final step, which is going to be placing a thermal pad into this space here between these four posts on the back plate before we reseat it. And that's this thermal pad that came with the kit. Uh, but in order to prep it so that it can receive these pads, we're first going to strip off these little risers. That's the strip that was between the E and the V and the V and the G. You can leave the one that's between the G and the A. And then this little 
And then we take the thermal pad here, and then we realize that the cat has just jumped onto the table and is sniffing on the inside of the computer case, which may be a static electricity problem, and here comes the kitty while I'm in the middle of a very sticky situation. Excuse me, cat? Cat, no? Can we just, no? Can we do this another day? Kitten, do you really need to be here? Are you, is it, is it necessary for you to have your ear in the shot? I mean, really? Welcome. Yeah, it's pretty much safe now for you to be. It's, it's still not safe. You really shouldn't be here. Can you just, just somewhere else be? There's tuna I hear next door. He fell for it. What's that pause? You think I should have put the sticky side down, do you? Well, it's always a critic. With the thermal pad in place, figure out which way this thing goes back together and then, you know, screw it back together. We're, we're pretty much done here. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, I have installed all the thermal pads! Or at least I will have by the time you see this. I'm not, I'm not recording this ahead of time before I even take it apart, because I've got the camera in a very specific position and I don't want to, I don't want to mess with it, I'm not, I, I, I don't even still have the parts thing over here. It's all done and it's installed. Shh. This is what we call a moment of truth time, people. Oh, shit! Here, you stand where I was standing. It's like VH1 behind the music, except for it's behind the git. Significantly less clean on this side of the room, isn't it? It's his fault. It's the cat, who's licking himself somewhere I can't show you right now. She's back hooked up, she's ready to go. She's got a frisky cat jumping all over her. Let's see what happens. The LEDs are plugged in. I wonder if the fans came on. That I'm not sure of. Oh! We've got action. The fans are spinning. Does the PC boot? Is Windows gonna like what I just did to this graphics card? Huzzah! It seems to be working. Shall we check my thermals? Now I've got my thermal outputs posted right on my desktop for convenience, so I know generally what they are, and um, they're listed in Fahrenheit, so don't be fooled, but uh, this is kind of mind-blowing, kind of mind-blowing to me, because that bottom one is the GPU. When I booted the computer, it was at 86, and I have never seen it that low since I purchased it. So a little collection of thermal pads and some stock thermal paste, because I couldn't find my Arctic Silver, and we have dropped, I mean, even resting, this is probably 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit, mind you, that it's running cooler. This is... A hell of a thing. I recommend this to you just for the sake of, like, overclocking and modding, honestly. Um, is it gonna keep your computer from exploding? Not as long as I've still got that special effect loaded up. I am the Ronin Bawn! And, um, that's, this is in... This is pause! I'm, I'm not being mean. This is, this is how mom grabs it. Pawn out. <laughs>